Welcome to Bramley Christian Fellowship Church. We hope you enjoy today's service.
Thank you, Father God, that you're amazing and you're awesome and that you call us friend. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We worship you today, God. And who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call Jesus. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing.
at you today, Father God, knowing that you not only call us friend, but you call us sons and you call us daughters. Thank you, Father God, that we're not just your friend, but we're your children today. Thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible for you and that all things are possible for you, God. We worship you for who you are this morning, God. Thank you for who you are, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are always fighting for Heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. At the mansion of your greatness, in your name I will bow down, in your presence fear is silent, for you wear the victor's crown. So let your glory fill this temple, let your power overflow, by your grace I live and breathe to worship you.
beginning and the end, Jesus. And you We give you all the glory. Lord, we worship you. Is that your prayer? Is that your testimony? You see, the word of God tells us in Psalms chapter 34 and verse 7, it said, the angels of the Lord encamp round about us, the ones that fear him, and he delivered them. You see, in our, in our worship, the angels, God dispatches the angels to encamp round about us. When the angels encamp round about us, they come to deliver you. Whatever your situation is, you can be delivered. Whatever your situation, God can restore everything to you in the time of worship. Because the angels are not there just to watch you and worship with you. The angels, it's on on site to deliver you. So that's why we can say, oh God, I give you all the glory. Lord, I give you all the praise. Because Lord, you are worthy, Lord. Lord, you are worthy of our praise. And Lord, we worship you, oh Lord. We exalt your name today. Because you are worthy. That's why we can come in an atmosphere like this. And we can worship God. Do you love the Lord with all your heart? Why don't you give him a hand clap? Thank you. <laughs> Kindly bow your head with me. Our Father in heaven, we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you for this privilege that we have to worship you. 
We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for waking us up this morning, opening our eyes so that we're able to see this day that you have made. Continue to live in us and through us. That you will receive all the glory and all the praise and your will will be accomplished in our life today. We commit our heart unto you. We commit our ears, our eyes unto you, O God. And we bring every thought that is not of you captive to the obedience of your word. That we will receive from you, O God, that which you have provided for us. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. All the time. Well, it is such a privilege for me to welcome you here today. If you're a guest today, first time you're attending Bramley Christian Fellowship, thank you so much for being part of the family of Bramley Christian Fellowship. For par parents, guardians with children, I want to remind you that we have a great children's ministry going on. We have the nursery program that's there. We have the children's ministry downstairs. We have the junior high as well. And the security kiosk is open to register your children. They're waiting for you. If you don't mind, you can take them there, register them, and it, at the end of the service, you just need to pick them up, right? We have a great, also we have a wonderful saltation service that's going on downstairs. If you need to attend that service, just go through the door and the ushers will direct you to where they are worshiping. So, we're going to take an opportunity and we're going to greet each other today. But I want to welcome Grace Martin. Grace Martin is new with us. Grace, just raise your hand. And we're going to take an opportunity and we're going to greet each other and express God's love as we do that. But be deliberate as well. If you see someone that you don't know, express your love to them. Introduce yourself as well. Thank you so much. We can hear it growing louder, songs from every nation rising to your throne. Saints in every generation singing for your glory, telling what you've done from the
this morning. Hallelujah. How many people this week have had something amazing happen to you where you can say, you know what? I know that God is amazing even more now than I did before. Amen. How many people are believing for God to do something so that he can, again, once again, confirm that, he's amaz- that he is amazing to you? Amen. Hallelujah. As we were singing, I just felt to share this with you, and I'm just taking about 20 or 30 seconds to share this. While we were singing there, um, I just felt in my spirit that there were people that came this morning expecting specific things to happen. And I just want you to know that God is, is watching. God sees that. God sees your needs. We know that we know that God knows every heart, every thought that we think, and, and God knows every detail of our lives. We know that. But I just want to share with you this morning that God sees that need that's represented in your life this morning. And I also want to challenge you that as we focus on worshiping Him, rather than focusing on the need that we have, that's when God takes care of those details. That's when God takes care of those details, when we worship Him. Hallelujah. Amen. So get ready to receive today because God has some great things in store for you. Welcome again to BCF Church this morning. God is such an amazing God, and He's doing such great things in our our midst, and we're so excited this morning that you're here. For those of you that are watching online this morning, welcome, and uh, God is doing some great things in your life as well. And if you are watching online this morning, just to the right side of where you're watching, there's a chat box. Go on there and let the people that are online as well, let them know that you're there and that if you have a prayer request or if you have a need, let them know and they will take care of that and they will pray with you and they will pass the message along so that we can pray and believe God with you as well. Amen. When you came in this morning, you received a a flyer, a package that looks like this one here. If you did not receive that this morning when you came in, if you missed one of those uh, wonderful greeters, warm greeters this morning, if you missed those, then raise your hand right now and the ushers have some extras. Also, they have some pens that if you don't carry a pen or you don't have a pen, uh, then you might want to get yourself one of those pens as well because inside that flyer is what we call the connection card. And if you wouldn't mind taking that connection card out of that package right now and just letting me know that you have it. And uh, inside that, on that connection card on the front side, which is the side where the date is up on the top left-hand corner, That would be the front side. If you wouldn't mind filling that out for us, we'd certainly appreciate that. Please make sure that you put uh, contact information on there, such as a phone number, email address, those types of things, so that we can be in contact with you and let you know what's happening and what's going on. And also, it's a way for us to stay in connection with you. Please make make note on there, whether you're a first time or second time or you're a regular attendee. If you are a first-time guest or and... uh, Uh, We would love to spend some time with you this morning. Just after the service is over, please check off your first-time guests. And after the service is over this morning, just to my right, your left, on the right side of the auditorium, a couple of welcome signs. Please meet us over there. if This is your first time here, and uh, we'd love to get take an opportunity to to meet with you a little bit and just share with you what God's doing a little bit. Hold hold on to your connection card because later on in the in the message, you're going to hear about some more things that we want you to interact with that on. We're going to get ready to receive our tithe and offerings in just a couple of moments. But while, they, while we're preparing for that, you can go ahead and you can begin to prepare that. And, and inside the offering, uh, inside that package is an offering envelope as well. You can start to prepare that as well. But I was thinking this morning about um, Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 where it talks about... Uh, when we give, people are going to give. God is going to give back to us. And he doesn't just give back to us, you know, just a little bit. When God gives, how many people know that God gives big time? Oh, I, I, I think there's about two or three of you know that. How many people know that when God gives, he gives back big time? Amen. 
If we were to open this up this morning to, to your testimonies of what God has done in your lives with regards to uh, giving and, and, and receiving and sowing and harvesting, I'm sure that we'd have a big lineup of people here this morning that could give testimony after testimony of what God has done in our lives. So this morning when, you, when we are challenged to give, we are not just giving away finances. We are taking this offering, we are taking our tithes, and we are sowing them into the kingdom of God. Sometimes, you know, in life you go through life and there are good investments that we make and there are bad investments that we make. I've been fortunate and blessed to be on both sides of that coin. We've made some good investments, and in in some cases, you know, you put your money into an investment. I had I had a friend of mine tell me one time, he says, you know what, I've got this investment for you. He says, it's a great investment. It's a can't-miss investment. I said, all right, I'm in. Guess what? It could miss. <laughs> but that's confidence in man. But I'm telling you this morning that when you invest in the kingdom of God, you, you will not be left without being blessed. It may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but it will happen, and God has a blessing that's attached to that. Amen? So this morning, as you prepare your tithes and offerings, uh, do so understanding and knowing that when we give, we just pour into God, we put into His kingdom, we take our seeds and we sow it into the kingdom. And so uh, the worship team, or Pastor Amber and the music team, rather, are going to play some music for us for a few seconds. Give you a chance to finish off writing out those offering envelopes, filling them out, putting your name on there. Please make sure that it's legible when you're printing or writing on there so that the office staff can deal with that appropriately. We appreciate so much what God is doing, and let's give God our best this morning. Thank you, Pastor Randall. Let's take our offering envelopes and let's just hold them up before heaven as we pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us the opportunity this week to go out and to earn wealth and create finances and and be the recipient of those finances as you've entrusted us to receive them. And just as we receive them now, Father, we sow it back into your kingdom, a portion of those finances. Father, we thank you that you uh, use us as vessels to allow that finances to flow from us back into your kingdom. And Father, as we sow these seeds back into your kingdom this day, Father, we thank you, O God, that you are going to bless these seeds. You are going to bless those who sow these seeds. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for your blessing upon them now, Father. That we pray, O oh God, that these seeds will not be eaten up with undue expenses, but they will accomplish what you have planned for them to accomplish. And Father, we just declare great blessings upon these seeds this morning, Father. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give this morning. The, the ushers are coming to receive your tithes and offerings at this time. Just while the officers are finishing up, receiving those tithes and offerings, let me remind you of a few announcements. First of all, the movement. There will be no movement tonight. It will resume next Sunday at 6.30. Uh, Right now, 
the youth and young adults are making their way back or will be back by the end of this service from their winter retreat. And we'll see, see and hear from them just uh, in just a few, a uh, little later on. But next Sunday evening at 630, there's a, win a special winter retreat party. Now, they had the winter retreat this weekend. Next weekend at 630, they're having the junior high, youth, young adult winter retreat, and all are welcome. So even if you couldn't make it, youth, young adults, if you couldn't make it to this weekend, you are still invited to come out next Sunday evening and participate in that youth, young adult uh, special winter retreat party. Also, let me remind you that coming up next month, early in the month, March 6th and 7th, from 6 p.m. on Friday evening, which is the 6th, all the way through till 6 p.m. on Saturday, which is the 7th, we will be hosting and, and holding a 24-hour prayer vigil. This is something that we've done uh, on a fairly consistent basis, fairly regular basis here at the church. And so we're doing it again this next month in March. And so we want you to be a part of that, but we also want to know what your prayer requests are. And on the back of your connection card, sometime between now and the end of the service, if you wouldn't mind filling out on the back of your connection card, towards the bottom, about halfway down, there's a place there for you to fill in your prayer request. So please fill in those prayer requests in there. And then during the prayer vigil next month, we will be praying especially again for those needs as well. Also, let me remind you that coming up on September the 12th and the 14th, there's a Festival of Hope hosted by Franklin Graham. And in preparation for that, there's an involvement seminar that's being held this Wednesday, February the 26th at 7 p.m. from 7 till 9.30 p.m. at Kennedy Road Tabernacle. If you want to be involved in that, you need to be at this uh, seminar coming up on Wednesday. And you can go to billygram.ca slash festival of hope and that will get you some more information on that also check out the check out your package uh the package that you were received that you received on your way and check that out and uh just get a chance to familiarize yourself with the rest of the announcements or visit our church website and uh, that will give you some more information as well in just a couple minutes pastor reed is going to come and he's going to share the word today I just want to give you an I want to update you on some family issue, some family update things uh, that happened in our church just recently. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to report to you that Pastor Morgan has returned back home from the hospital. Last Sunday, we were praying for yes, Amen, Hallelujah. They're probably watching on right online right now. So, hi, Morgans. God bless you. Uh, last Sunday, we were praying that that he would be released from the hospital and that God would strengthen him. And I went by last night to visit them, and uh, I was just uh, not, not shocked because we were believing for it, but I was very pleasantly surprised as to the strength that I saw in him and in his face and in his whole countenance just last night. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, God is strengthening them as well. And also, Fumi and Joseph uh, had a baby just recently. They're not here this morning. It was a baby boy. It was about seven pounds. And so congratulations to them. And uh, yes, amen, on the arrival of uh, their baby boy just this, uh, about a week and a half ago. Also, if you, had a, if you have or have had a birthday or an anniversary in the month of February, just let me know. Maybe you could just stand up. If you're able to stand, just stand anniversaries, birthdays, thank you. Wow, look at this. February is a great month. Yes, let's give them a big round of applause. Father, we thank you for these birthdays and anniversaries. We pray your blessings upon these individuals who are standing, upon the couples who are celebrating anniversaries and the individuals that are celebrating birthdays. Father, we just thank you and praise you. Continue to bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And also, I understand that we have some photos that were sent to us uh, from the winter retreat that, that's just finishing up, apparently just finished up. And so if you have those photos, there you go. There's a couple of photos that are up on the screen there. You can take a look at those. And, and God did some great things through our youth and young adults this weekend. And you're going to hear about more about that at the end of the service. And I think there was about 100 youth, young adults that went and enjoyed this weekend. So God bless them, and God bless you for uh, sending them up there this weekend. At this time, Pastor Reed is making his way up here, and he's going to give you 
give us the word for today. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Brian. I understand the youth, young adults are here. And we, we want to welcome them. And when they come in, we want you to give them a round of applause and welcome them. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. No more shackles, no more. I need you to no sing with us. God did something this weekend. Yeah. Come on, as many of you we can get on the stage. Come on up, come on up, come on up. No more shackles, no more chains, no more Come on, let's worship him today. Woo! Come on, everybody, come on up. No more shackles, no more chains, no more this weekend they're tired right now but let me tell you something we saw we saw God show up this weekend in a way that was just amazing last night our service God just came in and I think we spent a good hour hour and a half just at the altars last night as God's presence and just came in we had 31 young people rededicate their hearts to the Lord this weekend We had 16 young people filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues for the very first time. You know, it was just an amazing. Where's Anika? Anika, where are you? I just want you to come here for just a second. All right, Anika. Anika, what did God do in your life this weekend? church just becomes a routine and so it's something we we go to church because you know we just come to church and you know we sing and we're, we sing the songs and we sing the lyrics and we don't do it wholeheartedly because it's just routine and this weekend I just I tapped into God and I remember we were singing uh, Casey was singing a song like like bringing worship back to what it really is and it's about you it's not about coming to church and you know putting on this you know facade like yeah I'm a Christian or whatever it's really tapping into um, your relationship with God and wanting to become closer to him. So I really got closer to God through this experience. And so Amen. 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 Can I get Victor up here for just a second? Where's Victor? Victor, come up here. Victor, I want you to share something with our church, what, what God did in your life this weekend. I was, after I played at the front um, during Saturday night, I was just um, down the stair, uh, at the staircase, and I was sitting down and I was praying. And then my brother, my brother Corey, he came up to me and prayed for me, and he just spoke what came out of his mouth and from the bottom of his heart. He was speaking a prophecy on me about being a man of God to my sisters and being a man of God in my house, and that I should put my sisters and my family first. And then I started crying, I started praying in the Holy Spirit, 
Then I went, I went to the back, and I just felt like giving, giving Nicole a hug. And then she started praying to me, and then she spoke the same thing that Corey did, the same thing. Amen. And God is good. Amen. Amen. Pastor Steph, do we have a junior high that we can pull up here as well? Yeah, um, you know the saying, big things happen in small packages? You ever heard that before? Where's Sophia? Sophia, come here. Sophia. Sophia. Woohoo. Let me just say, look out for this young lady. Sophia, can you please share um, with everybody here what God did to you this weekend? Um, this weekend, I was just able to grow more deeper in God and deeper in His Word. And um, I was able to encounter the Holy Spirit like never before. And uh, last night's service, um, it was just so powerful and it impacted my heart and my life. And I was able to speak in tongues for the first time. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it was just an amazing weekend, and I learned a lot about my identity in Christ and just living for eternity and not for my life and just living for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can I get Alicia up here for just a second? Alicia, where are you? Do we have a young person? We had All People's Church. We have 20 of their young people join us this weekend as well. And uh, let's just share a testimony from one of your groups. Janine. Janine, step up and share what's happened. It was awesome to be with BCF this weekend in the movement. Um, so for a long time after my last, um, retreat, which was Saturate, uh, I kind of felt like every, the feeling that I had at Saturate kind of faded and I started moving further away from God. And, um, this weekend, Jen, the, the speaker, she kind of said exactly what I needed to hear. And, um, pastor actually, when he was praying, um, he told us that two people, especially, were on the fence about God, and I felt like I was one of them. And so I went up, and, I, and Alicia prayed for me, and it really helped me with everything. Amen. I want to encourage you, parents. God is doing something in this generation of young people in our church and in all peoples as well. You know, to think, you know, we took just over 80 of our own young people from here and the others that couldn't come. I want to encourage you as parents to please continue to put the word of God inside of your young people. God is doing something in our junior high ministry, in our youth and young adult ministry on Sunday nights. So I want to encourage you, get your young people out to Sunday morning, G now, but they're doing downstairs Wednesday night, Sunday nights. We have our uh, movement, youth and young adult service. There's not one tonight uh, because everybody here will be sleeping. So parents, we wore them out just just for you so but you have lots of laundry as well but I want to encourage <laughs> but I want to encourage our parents and our young people and our young adults that are here next Sunday night which is March 2nd we have a special service to tie into our Hunger Games weekend so we want to invite all our youth and young adults if you did not go come out next Sunday night it's going to be a special service spoken word we have a special guest speaker we have Zoe which is Pastor uh, um, Morgan's granddaughter who's here with Zoe here as well she's somewhere around the building right there our special guest speaker all the way from England. It's going to be a powerful time. Parents, I want to encourage you. You need to get your young people out to church. If they're laying in bed, my dad used to pull me out. My hair was not brushed. My teeth was not brushed, but I came to church. When young people experience God together like they did on this weekend, they will shake the world and they will shake your home. So I want to encourage you, parents, get them out to church, not just on Sunday morning, but to the youth programs that we provide as well. Can we just thank God with a hand clap of what he's done in our young people's lives? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much to all our leaders and our young people. You can come off the stage. Thank you, Pastor Reed. Thank you to Pastor Randy and Jill as well for the opportunity to take our young people away. You will hear more about what we're going to be doing this summer. We're planning a summer camp as well. And then we've already booked next year's youth retreat for the winter as well. So those are booked and we're working it because God's about to move in a greater measure in this place with our young people's lives. Amen. Can you believe with that for us? Amen. Pastor Reed, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jay. Thank you for the team. So please continue to pray for the movement, the youth, young adult ministry. Great things are happening in BCM. Only one person believed that. Great things are happening in BCF. Yes. 
All right, good. For the past few weeks, we've been talking about the family and endangered species. A family as created by God. Not a society sees a family, but the family has designed and created by God. You see, sometimes our troubles can easily distract us. And we lose focus of what God wants to do in our family. Sometimes when we go through those trials, or, our trials become permanent. Or we, we, no, it, it becomes permanent. It feels like it's permanent. We get accustomed to it. But that's not how God wants to see us. God has great plans for the family because he's the one who ordains the family. He's the one who created the family. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, I'll just read it. Then the Lord said, then God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our own likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the, wind, all the wild animals and over the, all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Here is the key. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth, subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every creature, every living creature that moves on the land. You see, for man to have dominion, for us to have authority, we need God's blessing. The blessing comes, then we have the dominion. It's oftentimes that man wants the dominion. They want the authority, but they don't want to come under God's authority to receive the blessing so that they can have dominion. If we want to have dominion over our family, if we want to have authority over what God has blessed us, blessed, who God has blessed us with, we have to seek God's blessing first so that we can be led into the way of how we should treat our family and our children. So God, when he instituted the family, God instituted the family so that the, the head of the family, mother and father, husband, wife, will have dominion over the children. You'll be able to bless them so that they'll be able to direct them accordingly. And God didn't finish there. We continue in Genesis chapter 2. After God did all that with man, he, he formed man with, with Adam. In verse 7, we'll pick up from verse 7. He formed man with Adam from the dust of, of, of the ground and breathed his breath into his nostrils. And man became a living being. After God did that, he planted the garden of Eden. And you know what he did about the garden? He gave the garden to Adam to look after the garden. And gave him specific instructions about the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good. But God did all that. He formed animals from the dust and gave Adam and brought them before Adam and said he was to name them and Adam gave all of them a name. After he did all of that, you realize that there was no one for him. There was no partner for him. And God said that it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him.
when God made Adam, it's interesting that when he made Adam, everywhere Adam went, Eve was with him. So it is. When God created you, husband and wife, everywhere you went, you had the seed of your child in you. Because God had great plans for your life. You see, what God was saying to Adam, my will cannot be accomplished, Adam, by you alone. What God did, he put Adam to sleep, took one of his rib, sewed back the flesh, put him to sleep, and formed Eve, his wife. What I'm saying to you today, husbands and wife, you cannot accomplish God's will on your own. When God put the both of you together, what God is saying, I have made one strong, the other one weak. Because if you notice in your relationship, wherever there one is strong, the other is weak. God does that so that he can accomplish his will through the family. And God wants to bless us in our family. But you see, God didn't stop there. God had great plans for the family. You see, the family is not just with Adam and Eve. Or the family, as God ordained it, is not just with your husband and your wife. God had greater plans for the family. And that plan that he had for our family, we can see that as we look at Psalms 139 and verses 16. Your eyes, David, David is writing, and David said, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All my days ordained for me was written in your book before one of them came to be. The first point I'd like to put forth today is the fact that God has great plans for your family. Tell your neighbor. God knew everything about you. Because the, Bible, the word of God said that all my days ordained for me was written in your book before one of them came to be. He knew how many children you would, children you would have. He knew the husband you would have. So that DNA, that seed was planted in you from the time of your birth. What a mighty God we serve. What a God we serve. So your children are ordained by God. They are planned by God. God is the one who is directing each and every one of them. But as I said, we didn't stop there. In, Matthew, in Mark chapter 3, and verse, verses 31 to 34, Jesus was about to lay out the great plan that God has for family. And in verse 31, he said, then Jesus, so Jesus was with his disciples. They were in this room. Then Jesus, his mother, and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Jesus said, who is my mother and brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and brothers. 
You see, Jesus was not at the point abandoning his family. Because as you know that in the, in the scripture, when Jesus was on the cross, he looked at his disciple John and he said, behold your mother, mother behold your son. So Jesus was not abandoning his family. But rather, what Jesus was doing, well, he was introducing a universal view of the family, which is the supremacy and eternality of our spiritual relationships. We have to look at the things above. We can't be looking at the things that we see. We can't be just looking at our family as what we see with a natural eye. We have to look at our family beyond what they are. Because God has great plans for our family. There is a universal family that is out there, which we are all part of. And God wants to let us be aware of the fact that we're not in this by ourselves. There, is, there are more to God's family than what is contained in this building. On the connection card, we have action number two. It says, we need to set our mind on the things above. We can't look at just what is before us. It's a spiritual relationship are as binding as earthly ones. And Jesus was paving the way for that. You see, the family as ordained by God, similar to the church, the family is considered local, but it's also universal. Local because of who we are, who we have in our immediate circle at home, but it's universal. Because the family of God is everywhere. So that's why we can leave this church, we go to any country, and we can still find Jesus. And we can still feel a part of that family. The family is also visible, but invisible. There are people that you are going to meet that you don't even know of. That's the ones that are invisible. There are people that you will never see. But when that glorious day comes, when we see Jesus' face, when we all get to heaven, we will see those people. That's the invisible part of the family. The visible part is what we see. The family is also Divine and it's human. Divine just like Jesus. Jesus was divine and Jesus was human. You see, it is the Jesus that is in me that connects me with the Jesus in you. Even although we may not be lovable sometimes. Even although we may have bad attitude. But when it comes to the Jesus in me, the Jesus in me can love the Jesus in you, and that's what makes the difference. We can overlook the bad attitude people have because Christ in us, the hope of glory, will draw each other to, to ourselves. On the connection card, we have a memory verse, and the memory verse is Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 14 to 16. Starting from verse 14. The Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesian, not to a church, but to the Ephesians, and he's writing to us today. And he's saying that for this reason, I kneel before, I kneel before the Father. From heaven, from whom every family in heaven and earth 
derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. And I'll just go to verse uh, 17 all the way to 18. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how high, how wide is the depth of Christ's love. You see, the family that I'm referring to this today, it includes all who have believed in him in the past, the present, and will believe in the future. All who have bowed their knees, all who is bowing their knees, and how, all who will bow their knees to Jesus to become part of the family of God. So, we have to be submissive, have a submissive heart. Because in order for us to bow our knees, we have to be submissive. We, have to, we, have, we must humble ourselves. So that's the first part of the next step of the, on the connection card. Is like, express your heart to God in a submissive attitude. We must always be submissive. We must always be willing to bow our knees to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You see, every family, both on earth or in heaven, is part of the family of God. And that's our spiritual inheritance. The family is bigger than today. It encompasses yesterday, Tomorrow, today, and the tomorrow as well. When God sees your family, he sees your family in what it was, what it is today, and what it will be tomorrow. With the natural eyes, we can't see that. We can, we can see what it was. Sometimes we can't even see what it is today. But God is able to see what your family was before, He's able to see where they are today, and he's able to see where they will be. So when God looks at your family, he doesn't see them in the position that they are today. He sees them in what they will become. The question I have to ask you this morning, how do you see your family? Are you just living for yourself? Is it just for you and your family? We are all part of the family of God. And we are part of the family of God because God is our Father. He is the source of creation. He is the rightful owner of everything. So when God looked in your eyes, when God looks over your family, he knows exactly what's happening with your family. He knows exactly what you're going through because he sees things in a bigger perspective than we would see it in the natural eye. God promises that you will love our family his love for a family is very powerful. That's why his love can bring us together. That's why his, his love, the Bible tells us that in John 3, chapter 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his son. And that love that he has for each and every one of us is poured out in the hearts of each and every one so that he can love us and through his love, we can love each other. We can even love the people that we don't see. The 
The second point I'd like to make this morning is God has established his great love for my family. Why don't you tell your neighbor that God has established his great love for my family? You see, this love I'm referring to, it reaches every corner of our experiences. It is wide. It covers the breadth of our experiences and it reaches the whole world. It is long. It continues the length of our lives. It is high. It rises to the heights of our celebration and elation. It is deep even to the depths of our discouragement. God's love is there for us. That's the God we serve. He, the Bible tells us that he loves us with an everlasting love. Throughout our life, the life to come, God love is, God's love is still there waiting for you because he has great plans for your family. He has a bigger plan for your family than you will see with the natural eye. Because your family is bigger than what we can think or dream of. As a family, sometimes, you know, you may feel lonely. Things are not going right in your family. But just remember, that too shall come to pass. God has great plan for your family. And God will demonstrate his love for your family. You see, we, we can't look at what is happening right now and react to those things. We have to have the mind of Christ. We have to think as though God see our family. We have to think in the way that God will see our family. Knowing that he has good plans for our family, knowing that his thoughts for our family are good and not for evil. So sometimes when you're going through the difficult times, sometimes when you don't even feel like calling someone, I encourage you, grab a hold of your family, your local family, and remind them that God has great plans for us. It's not over. His thoughts towards us are for good and not for evil. How do we live this out at BCF? What do we do at BCF to show that we're not just here for ourselves, but we are here for the people who we have not seen, the people who are outside of the four walls of BCS, and also for the people who are here. Through our mission trips, this church does a lot in mission, reaching the globe, reaching people who we don't even know, because they are part of the family of God. We have our life group. The life group is also part of our DNA, or part of the structure of the church, which helps us, each and every one, to be, extend our family into someone, some other family. That's what the life group does. I take my family and I go into a life group, I'm getting into that other family. And other families come in, we get to share our life. We get to share the word. So I encourage you to be part of a life group and extend the boundaries and the borders of your family. Your family can also be extended through serving in various areas of ministry. In the choir, the nursery, the children's area, the first response team, the greetings, whether we're in the parking lot. Because when you go and you work in those areas, 
You're taking your family into that ministry. You're meeting the people who are part of that ministry. So you're extending the border of your family. In January, we started a prayer time for the prime timers. And that's going so well. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., we have a call between 10 and 11. And if you're here and you're part of that prime timers group and you're home, you can participate in that call as well. If you see me at the end of the service, I can give you the number that you can call in. One hour we are on the phone. We pray, talk about the things of God, and exchange our testimonies. And through that, we're building relationships. Families are being extended because we're not just here for ourselves. We talk about the prayer team, prayer group, the prayer vigil. Friday night, all day Saturday to Saturday evening. You can be part of that. You can lead a group. Because when you're working in those areas, you're meeting people. You're interacting with people. Even for the young, the young adults, the youth and young adults that went away this weekend. I ask you this, do you think each and every one of them met somebody else that they didn't know? Every one of them was able to extend themselves into other families. The connection card is also something that we use. I'll share my testimony with the connection card, but I'll tell you, John MacArthur, I was listening to John MacArthur's story one day, and what he did, he said, when he was a young man, he was sent off to the army. He had to go in the army. So he was in the US. He went into the Navy. He said, immediately when he, he got there the first day, he had a, his roommate. And he came in with his, with his stuff, and he put his Bible on his, desk, on his bed. And his roommate, roommate said to him, Whatever you do, you don't open that Bible when I'm here. Because I'm not a God person. I don't want to have anything to do with your Bible or your teaching. So he said, okay. So he read his Bible outside, read his Bible when the young man wasn't there. And he said, God spoke to him and he said, well, why don't you encourage the person to learn with you? And he said what he did. He befriended the guy, and he said, well, I'm not here to preach to you. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You don't have to learn anything. But my pastor has encouraged me to learn this scripture every week. And I want you to test me. I'm going to say it to you, and I want you to test me, just to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. And that's how we started. It went into a few weeks, months. The guy started asking questions. What does this mean? He started correcting him. That man is now pastoring, a, he and his wife is now pastoring a church in the U.S. From that, what I've done at work, I said, well, if that worked for John McCarthy, it will work for me. I called up a few people, I said, I've got to learn this scripture. But because I have to learn this scripture, I want you to test me. Make sure I'm, I'm learning it. The first response I got back from an email, it said, I feel like I'm being pressured. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. But we have started since the 
first service in January. And I'm telling you, each and every one of them look forward to an email from me every Sunday so that they can get the word and we interact. While we're doing it, I'm not preaching to them. All I'm doing, I'm, memory, I'm saying the verse from memory, and I'm telling them how it impacts my life. They were asking questions. And as I said, every Sunday, if I am late, they will send me an email. Where is the word? This is something that you can do. Husbands, wife. If your husband is not part of the family of BCF, or if you have a child who is not part of the family of BCF, you can encourage him. I have to learn this scripture. You tell him you have to learn it. But I want you to help me. And I guarantee you that within a few weeks, a few months, they will start asking you questions. But remember, all you have to do, don't preach to them, because you will lose them. All you have to do, say that scripture, and just tell them what it means to you. That's it. Isn't that easy? That's an easy way to get people to, be part, to become part of the family of God, people who are not serving God. That's something that you can do. And I encourage you to start doing it. Your children, maybe your children, you may have children who, who don't want to go to church. But encourage them to learn the scripture, to help you to learn the scripture. And sooner or later they start correcting you. When they start correcting you, you know they're listening. But God wants each and every one of us to expand or arising, to expand our family, and to move in the area that he wants us to move. The last point for you today is, remember God sees my family from an eternal perspective. God sees your family from an eternal perspective. God knows how to use your whole life. He knows how to use your prayers, your giving, your words, your worship, your deeds, the little things you do, the big things you do, to bless you and the people whom you don't even know or who you will never see. But God can use those things. God can use every area of your life to touch people around you. When you're going through the difficult times, I want you to remember that God sees your family from an eternal perspective. He doesn't see them in the condition that they're in but he sees them of where they will be. And that's the view that we need to have in our family. That's the view that we need to have so that we can enlarge our sphere of influence, so we can expand our boundaries, so that we can reach out to other people, the people that are around, around us. And we can depend on God because he said that he works everything for his good to them that love him, to them that are called according to his purpose. In closing, let me encourage you this morning because God sees you and your family from an eternal perspective. It means that your future is not only good, but it's glorious. Beyond imagination. And that's how God wants you to view your family. You see, our family is not just within the four walls in our home. 
where our family is extended. The boundaries of our family is extended far beyond our imagination. Our family is not bound to where they are today. They're homeward bound to what God has planned for them. And we have to encourage them. We have to see ourselves as part of God's big picture. Because if we see ourselves as just within the four walls of where we are, we're losing the picture of how God sees us and how God sees our family. God's family is bigger than the four walls in which we are enclosed today. Do you believe that? Give the Lord a hand clap. See, you may be here today, or you may be watching over the internet. And you're saying, I have a relationship with my family, my local family, but I don't have a relationship with the universal church or the universal family. I've not made Jesus Christ my Lord. If you're watching the internet and that's your desire to make Jesus Christ your Lord, why don't you just click on that chat box and send us an email? You're here in this building and you want to be part of that family. Why don't you bow your heads with me? Right across, I'm looking. You said, I, I'm part of my local family, but I'm not part of the universal church because I've not bowed my heart to the Lord. I've not bowed my knees to the Lord. I've not submission, submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But I want to be part of that family that you just spoke about. I want to be part of that enlarged family. Why don't you just lift your hand? And I'll pray for you in closing. God wants to ensure that each and every one of us belongs to the universal church, not just out to our mother, brother, sister in our home. He wants us to be part of a bigger family. He has great plans for our family. Father, I thank you that every person, every ear that is in the sound of what I'm saying or what you're speaking through me are part of the family of God. And, oh God, I pray that we will see ourselves not just part of a local body, but part of a universal body. And to view ourselves in the perspective as you see us. Father, we just commit all things unto you. We commit this word unto you. And we bless you and praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name. Just a reminder, if you're here for the first time, you complete this connection card. You can hand it in at the door and someone will be there to welcome you at the welcome desk. First time guests, there's a gift for you as well. The given kiosk is open. The security kiosk, please go downstairs and get your children. And we have new, the new issue for our daily bread for March, April, and May. It, that can be picked up outside as well. On the bottom of the connection card, we talked about, Pastor Brian spoke about the prayer vigil that's coming up. If you have prayer requests, if you have needs in your family that you want us to pray for during that time, please indicate on the connection card as to your desire, who you want us to be praying for, what is your prayer request. And on the other side, you said, I'm interested in accepting Jesus as Lord. You can check that off. 
or rededicating my life to serve Jesus, you can also check that off if, you're, if that applies to you. You want to be involved in ward of baptism, or you want to attend the prayer vigil, please check those things off so that we will be in contact with you. Why don't you stand with me, please? Our Father, we thank you for what we have received from you. We thank you, O oh God, that we know that as we go, we go not from your presence, but we go with your blessings. I thank you, O oh God, that we will see ourselves in the way that you see us. We will be empowered by your spirit and by your love in everything that we do, that your will will be accomplished in our life. So, Father, we commit our hearts unto you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Here.